before the video starts, I do want to say that a lot of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So if you could subscribe, that would do a lot for me and I'd thank you very much for that one. Also, a lot of the people who watch my videos aren't following my Twitter and you should definitely go and follow my Twitter because you know usually when I'm going to post, I usually uh, post on Twitter the day before I'm going to post and stuff. And you can also uh, talk to me a lot more on Twitter. It's a lot easier to uh, contact me rather than in YouTube comments. You can uh, you know DM me or reply to one of my tweets. I'm usually quite active over there. So yeah, let's get into the video. So when I made my last tutorial, uh, the Twixter one, everyone was asking um, what impacts I use and how I made the impact on it. So I thought I'd um, use that as an opportunity to show you about uh, vertical shakes, how to make a really good vertical shake and a shake build up as well. So a vertical shake build up that transitions really well into the actual shake of the kill. Because you sort of want the shake build up to be roughly the same at its peak as the kill at its peak so that it doesn't look like it's sort of um, teleporting or anything. You want it to sort of stay shaking the exact same as it goes to the kill. It's a little bit hard to explain, but basically I'll show you how to do it all. So first things first, you, you want all your other stuff to be on the clip. So I'm using this exact same clip with the um, slow-mo already on it. And I've also got the uh, monochrome and gamma on it, the build-ups. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this tutorial because I already have one for that. I'll put a card on the screen in the top right of the screen so you can have a look at it if you uh, don't know how to do this already. But yeah, I've already got a tutorial on how to make the uh, sort of dark and grey sort of build up. And obviously I've got the Twixter on it already. But yeah, so the first thing you want to do is you want to make your shake build up. So to do this, you just want to make sure you've already split the clip at the kill. So you've got the kill on this side and then you've got the uh, build up on this side. So you can apply effects to one side and not to the other side. So I'm just going to grab S underscore shake. I'm gonna grab it under Sapphire Distort. You just wanna grab it on S underscore shake. You wanna drag it onto your first part of the clip before the um, kill, because this is gonna be the build up shake that we're using. And then what you wanna do, you wanna come down to the shake. You wanna just uh, turn the amplitude off. And I like to have my frequency at 15, personally. You can obviously play around with it. I'm just gonna show you the settings that I think look the best. You wanna turn off X shake, just like this. So the Rand amp is on zero and the Wave amp is on zero. And then you wanna come to Y shake and you wanna turn off the Y Rand amp like this but you want to change the wave amp to 40. Then you would come to the Z shake, make sure all of that's off. So yep, the amps are off on that. And you want to come to tilt shake and you want to make sure the amps are off, which they are, which is good. And that's basically all you need to do for the build up shake. Now you just need to keyframe it. So I'm going to come to about here, which is 935. That's about, um, that's roughly half a second before the kill. That's where I like to do it. I probably will play around with it. It depends on the kill. Some things look better than other things. But what you're going to do now is you want to come to the shake. Then you want to come over to the amplitude. You want to press toggle animation. Then you want to come to where you split the clip, which is obviously right in between the clips. You can go one frame before if you want. I probably will go one frame before so it makes sure it shows. And then I like to change the amplitude to about two. You can, if you want, um, ease them, which I think looks a little bit nicer. So to do that, just shift click on both the keyframes so that they're both blue up here. You want to right click on one of them and then click continuous bezier and you'll see they look like a little hourglasses. Then you want to just come over to the left and see this little arrow, drop it down next to amplitude and then zoom in by dragging this inwards. So just zoom in so you can see them both like this. And what you want to do is you want to ease it. So I want to drag this along so that it sort of slowly ramps up to the top and I want to drag this here so you can see that it slowly ramps up and then it's like peaking at the end. So it's not peaking for the for too long because we don't want it to um, show for too much. Otherwise, it will sort of get messy. But yeah, this is what how I like it. So just drag these pinheads, drag this out a bit, not too much and drag this in a bit, but not all the way. So basically just like this and you get a nice smooth curve. And I think that looks really nice. OK, so that's the shape build up done. It looks a little bit weird at the moment because it vanishes on the kilt. So we're going to add a shape to the main clip, a vertical shape that's roughly the same as this one to the main clip. So I'm just going to go search up an effect shake. And we're going to grab um, Sapphire underscore shape from distort once again, drag it onto this clip. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of copy the same settings, but the opposite way around. So I'm going to start the amplitude at 2 and then keyframe it and then put the frequency at 15. And make sure all the other parts of the shake are the same. So turn off the X shake and then make the Y shake wave amp of 40, but turn off the Rand amp and then um, make sure all of these are off. The, the Z shake and tilt shake should be off by default, but you can check if you're not sure. And then I'm basically just going to do the same. I'm just going to come about half a second after. So to about probably here, I reckon it looks good. And then I'm just going to drag the amplitude to zero. And then I'm, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to do the bezier just like last time. So we're going to shift click on both of them, right click and click continuous bezier. But this time I'm not going to mess around with the keyframes inside because this one's just to make it slightly smoother. I might um, increase it a little bit more just like this. So you can see that there's more of a um, curve so that it starts a lot stronger and then quickly gets lower at the end and then slows down. 
sort of sounds confusing, but it looks nice. So just um, yeah, just make sure you use Bezier's as much as you can. It doesn't matter a whole lot, but I think it looks slightly better when you use them. So I, I usually do. But this is what it should look like now. So there you go. You can see that the shake from the build-up sort of carries on really well to the shake from the kill because they're both exactly the same amplitude at this end of the shake at the start and the end of the sh and the start of the shake at the end. So you can see that it sort of transfers over without much um, problem. Rather than, for example, it starting to go down and then suddenly starting to go back up again, it sort of look, carries on going down, as you can see, and then goes back up again and it's the same amplitude. So it doesn't look too messy and it looks really nice. But yeah, I actually might shorten the uh, shake here just because I think it's a little bit too much at the moment and I might bring this bezier back a little bit. But just play around with it until you like it. I thought that was a little bit too strong, so I sort of brought it back. But this is what it looks like. I think I might increase it a little bit. Just make sure you play around with it. So there you go. I think that looks nice. But we're not quite done yet, because what we want to do is we want to add another shake so that when this vertical shake ends, there's still a little sort of calm little shake coming on in the background. So to do that, you just want to grab another shake from the effect uh, panel, drag it onto the second clip again and then just come down to the bottom where you find it on the effects up here. And then basically what I like to do is I like to put the amplitude to 0.2 and I like to keyframe it at the start just like this and then come to the end of the clip and keyframe it to 0.05 just so that it's still sort of there at the end of the clip and not quite gone. And then what I like to do is I like to change the frequency to 2 and I like to come down to the X shake, turn that off and then this time we're going to completely turn off the Y shake and we're going to make sure that only the tilt shake is on. We're going to change the wave amp to two, just like this. And this is what it'll look like. But yeah, thanks for watching, subscribing, all of that. And I'll see you in the next one.